Come on. Alright, so what's up, man? Make sure we see how you put your slow down. We need your power bar. I'm just waiting on the time, man. Are you ready? I'm gonna steal no time because I know James Harris gonna tell me about it if we steal any extra minutes or seconds from him. So hey, 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 I'm gonna bring up though. What you gonna bring up? Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to get jumped on. That's the inside joke. James said we should start at 12.30 in the morning. I said, James, you got to get that out, man. We ain't doing that. Uh, <laughs> all right, so who can uh, remind us what we talked about yesterday? Bruce led the meeting yesterday. Blue. By the way, didn't he do a good job yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fresh out of college, man. Killed it yesterday. He did a good job. All three meetings he did. He did really well, so kudos, man. Good job. Uh, who can remind us what he talked about? That'll tell me how well of a job he did. Post-trip. Oh, <laughs> post-trip. Post post what did he say about the post-trip yesterday? What did you guys say about the post-trip? Oh, shit. Well, inspection. Get a roll, Inspection, what else? All right. What happened to the coast route? What happens on the post route, right? He identified the difference between the post route and what else? Yeah. Post route and the post trip, right? So who can tell me what's the difference between the post route and the post trip? Post trip starts at the fuel line and the post route starts at the gate. Leave it in the yard. That's actually pretty legit. That's actually good, man. Leave it in the yard. Right? Yeah, right, but the difference is the post trip is specific to what? The truck. The truck, right? And he, we used the word to describe that yesterday, right? It's actually like the inspection with the truck. And the post route starts at the gate, but it comes to when does it stop? <laughs> when you park your truck. When, oh, does it stop when you, when you, does the post route stop when you park your truck? Oh, paperwork. When you, when you clock, clock out. Paperwork, paperwork, clock out. When you clock out, right? Exactly. Roach said when you clock out. So the post route starts by the time you enter the gate and ends when you clock out. The post trip will start at the fuel island. And let's start with that, right? If the post trip starts at the fuel island with the inspection, which Carl just identified for us, what stuff are we doing at as far as the post trip at the fuel island? Checking oil, lights, tires, look at your suspension, lights, tires, mirrors, everything. So you said lights, tires, mirrors, and everything. All that happens at the fuel island. That's a question. Sometimes, no. If you have traffic, you do it when you park your truck. The whole day. So let's break this down, right? <coughs> you pull into the shop, or excuse me, you pull into the fuel island, and there's traffic. What stuff are you going to do at the fuel island? Fuel? Just fuel. Take the tires. Fuel, man. Just fuel. What else are there? Tires? You can always check your tires. You can always check your tires for it to fuel up. Say You can always check your tires because you got to wait for it to fuel up. You got to automatically stop. So now we're getting down to the nut of what I'm looking for. How long does it take to fuel the truck? <laughs> How long does it take to fuel the truck? About four or five. What do you guys say? We got another yes. What do you guys say? Four or five minutes? Eight to ten minutes. So we got two minutes, four minutes. We got one guy that says you got to hold the pump. Garcia says you got to hold the pump. At any of our pumps here, do you have to hold the pump to fuel? No. All right. So they're auto fuel, right? Which means you stick it in. <laughs> you, squeeze, you squeeze the handle, and then you fuel. So how long? We got one guy that says two minutes. We got one guy that says four to five minutes. How long does it take to fuel? If you had to put a time on it, how long would you say? Average eight minutes, man. Eight minutes. About that. About I'll eight say minutes. five. Five. Eight, eight minutes to fuel. Five. You say five. Five to eight. Yeah. It all depends on fuel. If you only ran two loads or ran one load, something just saw how many gallons you have put in the fuel in your truck. <laughs> so if we got eight minutes a, is a high, two minutes is a low on average. How long do you think it takes us, takes us to fuel on average for the whole lot of business? Just to fuel. Check tires and everything. Just to fuel. Just to fuel. Six minutes. For uh, 50, 55 gallons, it's 8 minutes. What's that? For 50, 55 gallons, it's 8 minutes. For 50, 55 gallons, it takes 8 minutes. So, again, for the average, what would you guys say if we had to put a time on it? What's the average? Six minutes. Six minutes? So let's say it takes six minutes on average of fuel. My question then is, what can you get done on the inspection side in six minutes? Tires. Tires. Tires? Okay. 
So what's the process of sticking our tires at the fuel outlet on post trip? I jump out, stick the driver's side, and then go around, stick, stick the driver's side, side put the pump in, you know, go down and come back around on the driver's side. Okay. So a one pass, you do a one pass sort of system where you walk around. What about the rest of you guys? If it's lower than 90 psi, then you got a flat. Okay. So what do you do there? Right up. Right up, right. Okay. So Frank, Roach Frank goes around, does a one pass with his as far as his tires. Is that the way most of us are doing it? I do mine is different. Okay, how do you do yours, Bobby? No, when I get to feel out, I point to arrival in the yards, I pull my flashes out, I get my book and stuff, I walk out, I start the front, take off my tires, fire stream, go around the other side, check my tires, start the field, check all off, then I go back through the process. As I fill up, I get back to the truck, take my front lights and stuff. Is that on either side? Because there's two different, we got we got four different pumps, right? So this, is that the process on both sides? I know I'm going to the left side, which is the cool side, yeah. yeah. So this is the pond over here? Yeah. So you normally go on this side by having, what side is your fuel tank on? The passenger side. It's on the passenger side, so yeah. that's why you start the pump later, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm identifying that because some trucks have fuel on different sides, some people are more prone to parking on different sides, so they may start their fuel at different times. So, as far as yours, you're going around here, you put the fuel in over here, you go around, check the fluids, and then what? Well, I start the driver's side. My fractures are on, I start the driver's side, punch that, check that tire, go to check the fire station, go on by, check the first two tandem. My fractures in the back, take those two back tires, put the fuel in, and take my fluids and stuff, and come to the front. Cool. That's the process I do. So can you get all that done in this amount of time? By the time the fuel stops, I'm, I'm ready to go get, get the truck up on the hill, yeah. I can. <clears throat> Pretty well. Okay. Yeah. So, but I don't take all the stuff. I don't take everything before I start the fuel. Mm -hmm. So once I check everything, I start the fuel. Then, and that's, that's it. You know, I start the fuel and I check all the oil and stuff. Then the process is over. So, so Bobby gets all that done in about six minutes. He's doing pretty much the majority of it, right? What about some of the other guys that have a different system now? Who can give me one more example of a different way to do it because of maybe what they're fueling the, in the tank? <coughs> well, depending on how. Done, then he's blocked in, and he's got to wait till you get done, then you got even bigger backup. Okay. 
Okay. What, what do you say, Walter? If When uh, pump one is blocked, I usually go to four and I get the hose and go around. And it, I mean, it reaches all around, all the way around to the gas. So. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine does. If there's trucks in one and four. Oh, you said one and four were taken? One and four were taken, just like oh, the Oh, three? Nobody's missing parking at three. I've heard wait, wait, wait. Oh, and we got to open a pump right here, right? Yeah, you can't back into it. You no. can't back into it. Do you need to back into it? Nah. It reaches around. Nah, if you got a truck right there, you got one right here, right? Yeah, you can. Okay, we got the flow of the race going that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can just going right there. Right. So that's what I'm getting at, right? Because currently what we're seeing right now is this sort of situation, and maybe somebody parked right here, so we ask the question, why, when the hose will reach? Or maybe we see this too, right? How do you, how do you get into spot number two? What's up, what's up, what's up policy for bagging in? Not supposed to bag in. Not supposed to bag in the fuel out. So, how many of you have bagged in in the last week? You know, ain't nobody going to hit the hand in D.C. <laughs> Why you shit? We're going to pull up the video and show. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so, okay. So, a couple things I'm getting at. One is thinking through this process here. Bobby says he can do the fuel and the inspection in six minutes at the fuel yeah, island. Yeah. How long do you think the inspection should take total? Whether you do it at the fuel island or whether you do half of it at the fuel island and half of it up in the apartment spot like Don does it, 60 times on the field. Like, how long do you think that takes? About 12 minutes. Yeah. 15, 15 minutes. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. 15. 12 to 15. If we had to pick one. 15. 15. <laughs> they trying to give us some time, ain't they? Well, that's what, hey, that's what they said the standard was 15 minutes. And so, fit, so let's pick, we'll just take 15 minutes, right? <laughs> 15 minutes. Somehow, I just gave y'all an extra three minutes. Maybe. That's what we're going to see. So the question is, where's the right place to stick your tires? Where's the right place to check your oil and your fluids? On the hill, Because we, no. we have two different examples, and I'm sure there's more in the room of people doing it differently. So if we were to standardize this process and make it the same, where are we going to check our tires at as a site? That depends if the rules have changed, because every supervisor has came different. Well, I'm here now. Buddy. I know that's what I'm saying. I told you. <laughs> right? Come so, come I'm in. asking you guys, where's the best place to do it? So, Don, that'll be a change up for you. Yeah. How would that change your process if you're once fueling, if you used to be fueling up there? How would that? How would you have to adjust to make that possible if, to do your tires and fuel out? Uh, force me to do a quicker, quicker uh, <laughs> so you'd have to do a quicker, make a change routine. Yeah, to change your routine, you're doing it different. But what would have to be, what would have to be quicker? Because we're still saying that maybe it takes 15 minutes. So what would have to be quicker for you? Uh, to check my tires. Check my tires. After I get out, pull up the pump, get out of the truck. Probably do it the way Bobby was. Saying. That's what I'm talking about, Don. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> So what I'm getting at is this, is this might be a bit of a shift, but can we all agree that maybe the fuel island is the best place to do our tires? Yeah. Yep. What would be the benefit of us all doing it the same place? Getting the same routine. Same time. What would that do? If we do let's go the same routine. What would the same routine do for us? Cut the time off from the post trip. Huh? It would cut the time off from the post trip because if you do some of it down here at the fuel line and then you go up to the hill and then you do the rest of it, it's going to take more than 15 minutes. Okay. So maybe it'll save us some time. What else would it do if we all had the same routine? Be uniform. Be uniform. What's the benefit of something being uniform? In the back, who else? What's the benefit of having a uniform structure to how we're going to do the post trip? What would be the benefits to all of us to being able to do it at the same time? <coughs> Ricardo, help him out. Okay. 
Maybe save time. How do you say, how, would, how would that save time? Let's all go at the same time. Rephrase the same question. <clears throat> Same time, so I'm just asking you, how do you see that it's saving time? If we had the same routine, how would that save us time? And then it help them out. I have a question. Since, since you you uh, punch a, a right to the yard, how long is supposed to take from that minute, from that moment? To clock out. That's what we're getting at. We're getting at. We're almost there. I want to know now. We're getting at. Why don't you tell me? How long does that take? Sometimes 15, sometimes 20. No more than 20. In between 15 and 20. Okay, but so you're saying total between 15 and 20. If you had to help a car I think you got to use a common sense. If you, if you get to the fuel island, if you got three, four trucks, if you're in the back, I use the, I, I check my tires before I get to the fuel island. So you can save some minutes, you know. That's what it is. Yep. So if you had to help Ricardo out, right, because you're talking about when specifically you do it, <coughs> you know, we agreed that right no matter how no matter where you do it at, it's gonna take fifteen minutes. If you had to help Ricardo out and answer, how's that gonna save us time or how would a routine save us time, what would you say? Because you're gonna be big enough to talk only once and not twice. I mean you're gonna be at the fuel line once and get enough to, to check it, and then you go out there and park it again and Get off the truck again and check again. Yeah, so the benefit of how many times you're going to be on and off the truck. So here's what I'm getting at, guys. If we standardize the process, it might save us some time. But at the end of the day, it's still going to take us 15 minutes, according to you guys, to do a proper inspection on your truck. Right? We're saying it's going to take us six minutes to fuel. We're saying this takes 15 minutes. How is it possible we got a driver that can do this in the six minutes it takes to fuel? See what I'm getting at? So, to go this further, the first thing you do is drive in. How long does it take to get from the gate to the pump, you think, to, when you're driving in? Uh, 30 what? seconds. 30 seconds. So how long does it take to get to the fuel island to your parking spot? Another 30 seconds. What's that? Another 30 seconds. Maybe another 30 seconds. So we're talking about a minute total of drive time. How long does it take you to park? Back into <laughs> the spot. Some people are still learning. <laughs> so how long? <laughs> About that 30 seconds, maybe, Matt? So let's say we're, we're driving on the post line. Right? We're cheering over to the magic answer. Oh, we're saying about a minute and 30 to drive time. We're saying six minutes to fuel, a 15 minute inspection. How long does it take to walk down the hill? Five minutes. Five. <laughs> eight minutes. So he says five minutes. Somebody says eight, eight, eight. Uh, five minutes, right? Maybe. Why would it take five minutes in the PM? In three minutes in the AM. Tired. You see, what about when you to water the truck? I'm driving. So, so let's talk about washing the truck. Where in the post trip do you wash your truck? Oh. It's not in there, right? We pay, we pay another company to do that. So, we'll get to do this more tomorrow, but that's not included in the post route, right? So, we're saying, Matt said five minutes to walk. Where's the other, where's the other two minutes of walking on the post trip that we don't have on the pre-trip? Post route, pre-route, excuse me. Where's the extra two minutes? I ain't get to that. You're exhausted. <laughs> you're, you're telling me right now, it takes us five minutes to walk at the end of the day, three minutes to walk at the beginning of the day. Where are you walking? Working down the hill. You're walking down the hill versus up the hill, so that should take more time. Exactly. So Matt walks two minutes slower from his truck down here. It should be faster. You try to get off the clock. Try to get out of the heat. So it should be faster. What should it be? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get, get your keys. keys. Okay. Yeah. Paperwork. Whatever that is. Do you pay for it? So, how long does it take you to pay for it? Because those two different categories. Ten minutes. <laughs> 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 <laugh
you gotta wait on it. Well, you gotta do a log, you gotta wait on them sometimes, you know. It, it's, How long do you say you have to wait on average? Basically, Maybe a minute or two, just depends on if they got your paperwork ready or not. Sometimes, uh, lately, tablet's not kicking out the paperwork after you log it out, so they gotta wait for it to show up on the screen so they can print it out for you. Okay, that's another issue we'll get into later on. But you're saying it takes them a minute or two, so you're, you're saying it takes you eight minutes to do your paperwork. What about some of the other guys? It's gonna take eight minutes. It's going to take eight minutes. Shouldn't take eight minutes. How long should it take? Less than five, really. If they, if they got your paperwork ready, like you say, it shouldn't take less than five minutes to do the paperwork. Well, I'm not a speed writer. So we got ten minutes. We got less than five. You don't do a lot of writing. So what do you think? About five, depending on log. Five, depending on log. Wow. Somebody says, wow, what, 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 what are you saying, wow? Because it, it shouldn't take, if you know how to do your log, it should take a couple minutes to do your log, if that. Okay, 8.5 minutes. So how long should it take? You guys know why we're doing this exercise? Yeah. Why, 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 you, why, you, you're going to show how long we have to take you know, to do the post trip and clock out on our ride with the that's one reason we're probably doing it. What's, what's another reason we may be doing this? Save some minutes. Save some minutes? Let us set the time so we ain't got no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stay out of my office. Let's <laughs> gotta stay out of my office. <laughs> you know, hey, all you guys are right. All you guys are right. We're looking to save minutes. Can anybody remember on Monday what the time difference was from some people's post route to other people's post route? What was the shortest time our post route we had recorded last six week? Minutes six minutes and 45 minutes. Yeah, it was six minutes, which is actually seven minutes and 43 minutes. So there's a big gap in how we're doing, right? So kind of today what we're doing is we're trying to look for a way maybe to save some minutes, but we're also looking like Don Willie said to actually clarify what we're doing and how we're doing it. And to Roach's point, you guys are helping us determine what the times are. We can go out there with a stopwatch all day long and record and go, now's the time. One of the first things I heard when I got to the site of March was, we don't have no input. We don't get to tell. All we do is, here's our route. Here's our time. Now's our chance to get input into what we're doing, and what we're trying to do is nail down on agreeable time. Who can tell me the goal of the post route? The whole goal of what we're doing in the entire post route process. To get you Not off a time. the clock. Kill my damn office, man. Those can't talk anymore today. So, who can tell me the goal of the post route? He's absolutely right. One of the goals is to get us off the clock. What's the other goal that's more important than getting us off the clock? Check your truck. Do a proper. Check the truck. And why would checking the truck be real important to us? Save time. How do you save time by checking the truck? We're giving you time, so how do you save time? In the morning, save time. How does it say time in the morning? Because if you don't check it in the night, there's a chance that something's going to happen in the morning. It's going to be more time than nothing yesterday. Exactly. You guys catch what he said? He said if we don't check it at night time, maybe we don't get a chance to work on it. It's going to cost us more time in the morning. And it's happening day after day after day after day, right? Which means that there's something going on in our post-route time, our post-trip inspection, that's not giving us the best chance to be successful next morning, right? That's why this whole week we're focused on it, so that we can give ourselves a better chance, like Matt said, to succeed the next morning and to get out of the yard on time. And in theory, which of these processes should be the most difficult, the post route or the pre route? I would say the pre because you got to have your lights so you can see everything in the morning. Okay, then, so oh, visibility, the yeah, pre trip may be a little bit more difficult. Yeah. So, what's the benefit of the post route then that we have that we don't have in the morning? What's the benefit? A post route inspection. Yeah. If you do a good post trip, you minimize everything in the morning. But a pre trip, let's get that coming. Come on, roll it back. Classic, baby. Come on, real. Like Greg say, sheep, man. Said that's that between what James said and you three guys mentioned, that's really the goal of what we're trying to accomplish. Today, I'm really less focused about these numbers, right? I want to get an idea of what you guys thought it should take. We kind of have an idea of what it should take. We'll come to the middle and talk about that on Friday. But the goal of today was go through the exercise while we identify every single thing that we're doing at the end of the day and then get an idea of how long it should take, bringing awareness. On Friday, we'll more agree on those times. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about stuff that we see, that you guys see that is actually we're doing in the post route that maybe we shouldn't do, right?
But as far as today is concerned, it's how are we actually doing the post wrap. And to Greg's point, it's more important because it's going to set us up for success in the morning. That's what that is. Less breakdowns. It's going to be a lot easier. The post trip should be easier. Or excuse me, the pre trip should be easier having a good post wrap. All right. So. All good points today. I missed a handful of things along the way, I know, but we'll hopefully come back to them um, as we get further into the week. Again, what's the goal of the whole post route, guys? Save time. Save time. Minutes. Save time. What else? Set us up for the pre-trip. How do we get set up for a good pre-trip? Success. Let's down trucks. Let's down trucks, but how do we get there? Did you have those things with the mechanics, too? Because we're right out of stuff in... in, in you get here in the morning, you're supposed to fix it, you make it the route, you still got the same problem. So, Garcia says the, the problem with the, what we're doing, the problem with our AM, potentially, is with the mechanics. The conversation we're having today is what do you control, right? We can blame, we can point fingers all day long, but we have instances this week that have nothing to do with the shop writing something up. It has stuff to do with us not writing it up. So that's the conversation today. Are we doing everything we're doing? before we start to play the playing game. So does the shop affect us? 100%. But how many times do we catch stuff on the pre-trip that could have been caught on the post-trip that hurt us the next day because we didn't do a proper post-trip inspection that would safely give us an opportunity to operate our vehicles the next day without dealing with anything? So we need to actually give the shop a chance to succeed. Right? So the conversation this morning is about us. We can get into the shop down the road, but this morning, are we doing everything possible? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have one of you guys actually go down and demonstrate his post-trip inspection. And the focus of this is for you guys to keep your eyes attentive to what's going on and let's define if he's doing everything right. If he's not, what we should what we should adjust and what we should change, right? According to his process, it's actually really, really good based on seeing it personally and based on walking through what he's actually doing. This isn't set up. I didn't tell him what to do. I didn't tell him this is the steps to take. A very experienced driver that I respect, uh, much like a lot of you guys, He's going to show us how he walks through his post trip, and we're going to see how that benefits us as we go into Thursday and Friday. Tempo. So we'll go right down outside here. Bobby Hector's going to walk us through uh, this post trip. Right there, my man. 